<clears throat> All right, so welcome to part number two uh, of the live stream edition of Programming with Christian Jackson. Uh, thanks for tuning in. The last one went so well and got a lot of views. So I decided to do uh, a round two since people were interested in it. Um, so again, this is going to be like a, a, a Q&A type session. Um, in addition to just kind of watching me reprogram some stuff because uh, this last week when I was on tour, um, just that little like week tour, there, there's some videos up on my channel if you want to check those out. I'm sure you already have. Um, I was using the 3.2 software that whole time and <clears throat> I came up with some ideas in programming that I wanted to revert back to my 3.1 file. So I'm currently working on 3.1. And if you're watching this on the archive, all the links for the software and downloading everything uh, will be down below. I, I, again, I don't share my show files. Um, even just you know all the, the screen cap, the screen caps that you see should be enough to get your own programming going. Honestly. So, with that said, oh, we've already got 66 people. Uh, sweet. So again, it's kind of hard for me to read the chat while I'm teaching. So if you could uh, tag me in the chat, it highlights my name so I can see it a little easier. And then um, that'll that'll make things a little easier, I guess. Let me make sure the right microphone is selected here because that fucked me up last time. All right, yeah, we got the right mic. Does everything sound okay? Does everything look okay? No dropped frames, looks good ish i guess hello to sweden hello to the netherlands hello hendrik hello hello deutschland perfect okay all av is good and the delay is not too bad um, before we get started let me see if there's any questions right off the bat um yeah there's no the, so yeah uh the way i have my show file set up it can be used on any size console. Um, let me actually show you how I do that real quick. I'll show you on screen uh, two. So if I go to playback here, you can see uh, this is obviously like a color screen. So I have my layout view my color picker, my color effects generator over on the right over here. Uh, but if you look down in this row right above the command line, there is a section of four views. And watch what happens when I click on these views. Not only does the view change, but if you look at the view pool numbers, when I click on each different view, it's actually changing the bank of the view. So when I click on positions here, the color pool number goes to 109. So these are actually, it's, it's, they're actually different uh, views, right? It's, it's how it has to be programmed. So when I click on the play button over on the right over here, I then uh, have like a second view. So all the views that are stored over here, that's like the top tier of the view. Then if I want to change the view of just this screen, then I can change, you know, what's laid out. And this is uh, convenient for me because if I want to say have my color over here and my gobos on this screen and then my group masters on this screen, so you can see all of them, I can quickly choose um, what I want on what screen. And I should do a little overlay here. Uh, let's see if I can do this easily. I don't think I can. Yeah, it's not going to be super quick for me to make a text overlay and show you which. Actually, that would be kind of cool. I would like to do, I'd like to stream in 4K and then have like a cutout of the console on the screen. And you can see which screen is actually doing what. I think I'm going to work on that for the next stream. <clears throat> How do I do unsync strobe? Unsync strobe, there's a couple ways to do it. If you're, uh, if your fixture has a strobe channel, 
with random strobe in it. That's the most common way that I will do it. I'll just save it as a preset, a uh, global preset for each fixture type. And then I just store it into a, a queue. Um, but if, for example, the fixture doesn't have a strobe channel, so say like a, an RGB um, uh, pixel or like a um, just an RGB cell, right? Where you just have a virtual dimmer, you just uh, create an effect on the dimmer. So that would look something like this. Let's go to screen two here. So what I would do, I would just create a template effect first of all, dimmer. And then I actually don't really like using the random form. I feel like it uh, is not quite right. But uh, that is kind of how you would do it. You would select random, change your speed group to dimmer so it matches with the rest of your dimmer chases. Or not. I mean, you can do either or. Uh, maybe change the rate to something like 4. And then you can apply it. So let's see what that would look like here. Delete. <clears throat> so yeah, just, uh, it's really, if, if your fixture doesn't have a shutter, right? Like an actual shutter, then just use a dimmer effect to make it look like it has a shutter. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> how does addressing the fixtures work? Oh, that's pretty easy. Um, so each venue I go to has a patch or they're supposed to give me a patch. And uh, sometimes it's a sheet of numbers written down and sometimes it's an MA2 file. So for example, this will be a good cloning example. Let's do this. I'll put this on screen one. Now we'll do this on screen two. So I have my start file here that I'm working on. And let's look real quickly at the patch and fixture schedule. So we'll go over to this screen, this screen. Um, so I have this broken up into a couple of different segments. And this is wrong. I need to relabel these. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm still getting over my sickness a little bit. It was really bad for like three days there. Okay, now we're edited. So on the left here, we have our layers. Layers can be anything you want. It's just a way of organizing data. It's uh, since you only have two tiers of, uh, of, of fixture organization in the, in the edit setup menu. You have your layers and you have your fixtures. That's pretty much it. I wish there was a little more complex way of doing it, but that's the way MA gives it to us. So, uh, since this is my clone file, I currently don't have an active show loaded. So if you look up here in my edit setup, there's a layer that is blank that has no fixtures in it. This is just a label layer as is this clone sources one, as is the fixture type storage. There's never going to be anything in these. They're just for me to visually see where my show file is broken up. So if we look down into the clone sources, you'll see I have a hundred of each fixture type patched. And I usually input, um, so each hundred of these are like my most commonly run into fixtures. So for my wash one, I have my Mac 101s. For spots, it's Viper profiles. Beams, Platinum Beam 5R Extreme. I just run into those the most. I don't actually run into Sharpies that often. 
uh, Mac Auras for my Wash 2 LED strip color force. Actually, these should be 72s. I'll swap these out for 72s. <clears throat> Clicky keyboard. Clicky keyboard. Mode 4. Cool. So what I did there is I just swapped out the Color Force 48 for Color Force 72 in all of my uh, all my fixture types for my LED strip layer in my clone sources like directory. This is how I have to organize it because MA doesn't give me another folder. If they had folders for layers, that would be really cool. Uh, next is the strobe layer, Atomics. There's a hundred of them in there or 96, close enough to a hundred. Uh, yeah. So this is what it looks like before I import any sort of show fixture at all or any, any sort of show patch at all. There's no DMX addresses in here. It's literally just fixture data. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to partial show read. Uh, I'm going to partial show read from a show that I was working on this last week, just to show you the process of cloning, right? Um, but before I do that, I need to kind of finish up my cloning page, which is here. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do, uh, basically what I'm doing is I'm going to store uh, groups for each of those clone source layers. So I have the wash spots, beams, wash two. So let me go for here. Okay. So we can see it a little easier, <clears throat> more easily, I guess I should say. Uh, so I still need to store my wash two, which is 10801 through 10900. 10801 through 10900. Please store clone source wash two. So uh, that's good. Uh, I need to do LED two. 10901 through 11,000. Okay. Also, I don't have my physical command wing with me, which is uh, making things kind of difficult. Head movement speed on a fader. Okay, I'll add that to the list of things to describe. To my variables. Uh, I probably won't go into variables today. That's a little complex. Uh, no, I don't really produce anymore. How much lighting equipment do I own? Not that much. I mean, I have like a command wing, fader wing, like 16 moving heads and some LED strips. Enough to do like, uh, you know, like maybe... I don't know, 800 person show pretty well. Uh, what else we got? Okay. Oh, we got a hundred people in here. Not too bad. Uh, who's messaging me? All right. Almost done with this. I'm so close to having this start file finished. And once I have it done, it'll be so nice. All right. Uh, strobes 10401 through 10,50. 10,401 through 10,50. 10,500, excuse me. Okay, already got those in there. Last thing I need, I think, is the blinders, which is. 10,001 through 10,100. The reason I use uh, like the 10,000 series, it may seem a little strange. Uh, the reason is I'm using it to, again, separate out in the patch because no two fixtures can ha have the same ID unless they're like multi-patched or whatever. Um, so that's how, that's again, how I kind of separate out 
in the in the patch what fixtures are part of the actual show what fixtures are part of my clone source or the ones that are storing all of my show data and then which ones are storing all my preset data um, because if you delete something out of the patch um, you no longer uh, really have access you, you kind of you kind of you can destroy presets and stuff and you no longer have that data so i have fixture type storage as well where i store from show to show all the different fixture types and their presets that's where they go they go to die down there uh let's see here okay so i'm going to save this as my start show 3.1 overwrite now what i'm immediately going to do is save this as <clears throat> so let's say i load up this start show and i want to start cloning in my new show that i'm working on so i'm going to label it this as my uh actual show once i've loaded my start show in here so i'm gonna say okay this is the actual show we're working on now then i'm going to uh to partial show read initialize the actual show so let's find a cool show let's do now uh, let's do in uh, the chicago show so when I load the Chicago show, oh, with latest, ugh, fun. So I guess you can't partial show read when the show is of a newer version. I thought you could. I guess you can't. Uh, so in that case, let's do the... Ooh, my lights are freaking out. Let's do... Bumper shoot. Just because we've all seen that one before. So, uh, now that I'm in partial show read, let me pull up this screen here. Partial show read is... Uh, it's it's comparing, because uh, like I said, you can't have two fixtures that have the same ID, right? So partial show read is going to merge those shows and combine them into one patch. So what I'm doing is I'm going through this list here and seeing if there's any overlaps. And remember how I had all my fixture numbers in like the 10,000s? That makes sure that, I, that it makes certain that I won't have or I shouldn't have any overlaps in a normal show with a normal patch. So we can see down here, this is like the normal show stuff. So what I'm going to do is I am going to just hit the wizard and uh, we're going to uh, merge other. And then I'm going to select down here. These are already pre-selected, that's fine. And I'm going to use other and use other stage. Make sure you hit use other stage, otherwise the DMX addresses won't follow through. I'm also gonna do the same on the radiance and the hazer, or excuse me, the radiance and the fogger. And then once we have all the lines prepared, so on the left is all my clone sources, and all the right is the stuff I'm bringing into the patch. I'm going to hit prepare. So now, if we go into the patch, we will see we have some more layers in here now. Down at the bottom, these are the show layers that we just imported. So let's look at what we have in here now. And let me pull this up on a bigger screen. So we'll save this. Since we're on our new show name called Actual Show, switch this over to screen two. 
we'll look at all the screens here. <clears throat> Excuse me. So let's look at our patch. Now we have, I'll zoom in for you guys on this one. This one has some good information in it. So now I'm going to cut these layers and place them uh, usually at the very top. Come on. Cut layer. Paste layer. Uh, just because it's easier for me to see that. So there's our show fixtures. And now we're going to make some groups. Okay, so uh, let's auto generate groups based off of layer. And I'm going to, going to delete all of my basic groups. So group groups one through nine are always like uh, based off of fixture type. So I'm going to go into auto create after I pull up all screen here. So I'll go into setup auto create <clears throat> and then we're going to choose layer <clears throat> and you're going to use the create all for each one of these layers so all the mac one ones create all beam five r's create all color chorus create all viper Create all. And then the, the blinders got kind of lumped together with my clone sources. So I'm going to go into here, uh, highlight just the blinders that I need. Create all. Edit group name. Blinder. Created one group. Okay. So now if we go back, they have generated into this uh, first little six sections of my group pool here. And just to make it easier to see what's going on, uh, I have them organized into like these like vertical columns, kind of like how I do everything else in this file. So let's look at my clone clone uh, thingy. <clears throat> uh, da, da, da. So I'm going to move these so they're in the right slot because these macros above here reference the group numbers. So they all need to be in the right column otherwise the cloning won't work so i'll move the atomics over to the atomic slot I'll move the vipers over here oh here's a little tip too if you're moving a lot of pool items between each other if you just click the move button once and then drag then you don't have to keep clicking on the uh <clears throat> You don't have to click, keep clicking on move until you're done. So I'm finished dragging all of this. And now you can see the columns all line up. So group one is Viper. Group 11 is my spot symmetric. And then group 101 is uh, clone source for spots. And it's the same with row two. So row two is all, or excuse me, column two. Column two is all the beams. Column three is all the wash ones. Column four is the wash twos. Those are the moving heads. Uh, column five is the LED strips. Column seven is the atomics, so on and so forth. So <clears throat> when I hit this macro to clone everything, and let me actually pull up a stage view. Uh, let's look at these macros real quick though, just so you can kind of get an idea. They're really not that complex. So look at, let's look at the Mac 101. Macro. All it says is clone group 103 at group 3 if sequence through. So what does that mean? It is taking our source fixtures, which are group 103, and it's saying I want to clone them so that everything else in the show file behaves exactly <clears throat> like group 103 at group three 
That's our destination. That's where we're pasting all of this data. You have to think about um, everything we're doing in the MA <clears throat> universe is really just like data management. And it's not so much, there's not so much lighting actually going on. There's not so much lighting programming that's involved. It's a lot of data management. So that's, this is literally all the cloning macro is. Group 103, at group three, if sequence through. And I need to label that clone wash one. And I'm gonna copy that macro because I need to, or actually I've already got one here. <clears throat> I'm not sure why I have next in there. Okay, these all look good. Sweet. And I just realized it won't really matter if I do that because uh, what I use ever use it. What does Sim do? I'll explain Sim in a second here. That's like the next step. So first we're just getting the patch in and then cloning all of the uh, data. And then once we clone all of the data in, then we make it look pretty with how the rig actually looks. So if we hit clone spots, it's going to come up with a uh, <clears throat> confirmation box and we just do low prio merge and it goes through and it merges all of the data from the, the source spots. And we do clone beams, cloned, clone wash, clone. We don't have a clone wash too, so we'll skip that. Clone LED strip, go. Clone atomics, go. Clone blinders, go. Easy, right? That's all it is. Uh, so let's look at the stage view. And if we had any luck at all, which is actually kind of asking a lot, if I pull up my executor, hey, they work. My chases work. So remember, I didn't have any information uh, in here beforehand. Let's see. Let's see if the colors work. Hey, the colors work. It's a miracle. It's a cloning miracle. Miracle of cloning. Um, yeah. So now we have all of the data for the fixtures cloned in, but, um, to make it look like it's supposed to look, we still have a couple more things we have to do. Uh, <clears throat> most important thing is making sure the effects line up and that's what these spot symmetric beam symmetric wash symmetric. That's what this, these middle groups are for. <clears throat> so from this point, what I can do, since we have a stage view that we imported, uh, <clears throat> what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a layout view of all the fixtures that we just imported. So I'm going to select all those fixtures and I'm going to store that to layout one. So now when we store it to layout one, we zoom to fit. All these fixtures are in a line here. These are all of our fixtures, but I want to arrange these, uh, so that they look like how they look in the 3d. So I'm going to hit setup and we'll go to screen here go to arrange camera front one and apply <clears throat> with any luck hey look it worked look you guys it worked so now this is what the <clears throat> the rig looks like from the front in layout view. Then all we do is store that to a view. We can come back to this and grab fixtures and stuff. Uh, and then one other thing I will do, <clears throat> uh, let's do it this way. I've started doing this recently. I'm not sure if I like the way it it works. I used to just do separate layout views, but I've been using worlds recently. 
So we'll go to the world pool. And I'm going to delete world, oops, type here. Because uh, I have some worlds in here I don't want. <clears throat> delete world two through 12. For some reason I can't delete some of these. Whatever. I'm not sure why I can't delete those. But that's okay. So now I'm going to store a world for spots. I'm just going to overwrite. I'm going to store a world for beams. I'm going to store a world for the 101s. Wash one. I'm going to store a world for color choruses or LED strip. And then I'm going to store a world for atomics. And finally, a world for blinders. You guessed it. Where's my cat? She's sleeping right there. You should be able to see her. Yeah, you can see her. <clears throat> so let's uh, zoom in on this, uh, this thing I just did. So I took a camera view of the front of the stage from the 3D view, and then I stored worlds for each type of fixture. So now I can just kind of bounce between these. Looks like some of the wash ones didn't get. Hmm, that seems not right. These look fine. Atomics look fine. Cool. So let's use the spots as an example here. I am going to now make a selection that's symmetric. Right? So what I'm going to do, we're going to go kind of like a snake. So we go left here, right here. Uh, actually, we're in uh, frick. This kind of sucks. Start in here, out here, across the front, in here, out here. Now I'm going to store that as spots sim overwrite. Okay. So now when I select spots sim, if I next through it, you'll see that follows that same selection order on the layout view. And that's the secret to the symmetric effects. Okay. So now I'm going to see how that selection looks when I have it uh, in an actual effect that I've made. So I'm going to select spots sim and we're going to go over to my selective effects page and uh, I don't want to explain how this is laid out right now, but suffice it to say that this row that I'm working on here, this top left row is all my dimmer chases, or all my dimmer effects, excuse me, for my spots. Uh, macro writing logic. Yeah, one second. Let me finish this real quick. Uh, so if I go into edit this effect, by right clicking on the tile, you can see that I have 116 fixtures in this effect. Why do I have 116? Well, I only have 16 vipers, right? Well, the reason is when I cloned all of that data, the clone sources were also stored in this effect, right? So when I clone in the new data, it's adding in those extra 16 fixtures from the patch but we don't actually have 116 vipers in the show. Uh, so to make it actually work, we need to do what's called take selection and remove individuals. So oh, bumped the mic, bump the mic. We'll do take selection, which brings our effect line to 16. And we don't need to remove the individuals anymore because that took care of enough. So now if I run this effect, 
and I look at just the spots, look at that. It's a symmetric effect, symmetric ass effect. That's as symmetric as it gets. Look at that symmetry. Sexy. <clears throat> I feel like I need to open this window a little bit. Ah, that feels better. And fresh air. So, and the cool thing about the selective effects is they auto update in all of my cues. So if I go through all of these, uh, if I go through these effect pool items one by one and I edit them, I take selection. Oops, hang on. I have to go to full world. That's okay. So that's another, uh, another thing. Make sure you are in the full world every time you go to edit stuff. That's one downfall to using the, the world's thing, I guess. Uh, so take selection, remove individuals. I'm just going to go through these like seven effects that I have for each type. Right click, take selection, remove individuals. Right click, take selection, remove individuals. Take selection, remove individuals. Cool. So now, um, go back to spots, spots world. We're still just running in the programmer, so I'm going to clear out the programmer. And I'm going to pull up. First of all, we'll see the whole view here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, I'm going to make these icons a little bigger, first of all. Okay, so we can see it, see it a little easier, more easily. So if I bring up my spots fader, it works just like before. We tried this already. The colors worked too. But now as I go through all of my chases, they're symmetric because I updated those tiles. And so that means I, I, doesn't, I don't have to do anything with these sequences, they're already, they're already good to go. Okay. So I went through a lot of stuff there. I'm going to scroll back through the chat. We've been doing this for 40 minutes now. Yeah. Go to full world is, is the same as typing world one or clicking, uh, you know, there's, so there's, you can't delete world one. So there's always going to be a world one. You can't move it. That's, uh, that's the way that's like one good troubleshooting thing. If you're ever having a problem programming or something isn't, something just isn't working right. Check to see if you're in a world. And one way you can tell is, uh, in your command line, if you look, uh, let's zoom in here screen two. This is the screen right above the encoders. So if you look in your command line all the way to the right, there is a little globe, which is uh, worlds. So if you click in your message center here, you'll see all of your warnings uh, and icons, all those things. So you see, I have two warnings. One is not enough parameters because I don't have any hardware connected. This is just purely an on PC session with no hardware. And to the left of that, you see the globe, which indicates that I'm in a world. Okay. Um, and if you click on the message, it'll show you which world you're in. But if you want to get out of any world, you can either click on the world pool icon number one, or you can just simply type world one, and then you're back to full. All right, let's look at some chat questions. Oops, I just erased all of my chat. No, I didn't. Okay, 
I thought I did. That was scary. Uh, if sequence through, just limits it to the sequences. The, I mean, you could just clone it without saying if sequence through. It would pretty much do the same thing. Am I going to ProLight and Sound in Germany? When is it? I don't know, maybe. Yeah, this is going to be uploaded uh, immediately after. So I'm starting to do even odd a little bit differently because uh, I've been spending way too much time on the shows uh, using using up a lot of time like reprogramming blinder hits and stuff like that. So I'm working on a better way using just effects because I've found that <clears throat> effects are selective effects specifically are like uh, the way to do everything as far as updating and stuff. DMX sushi. I haven't heard of DMX sushi. Can you explain how I did that with the group phase and direction thing for my effects. Yeah. I would use a tractor D2 before I used an S8. I'm going to get a pair of D2s. That's the next on the, on my list. I'm switching to tractor. You heard it here first, folks. Uh, oh, yeah. So let's look at one of these effects. So let's look at the spot sign effect. Uh, it's really simple. It's different than the default uh, sign effect though. I'll explain a few of the differences. Uh, the default goes from zero to 100 real quick, but mine goes from negative 100 to positive 100. The reason I do that is because the nature of a sine wave means that you're only ever going to be hitting the zero uh, the zero value DMX for just an instant. And so that means for all but an instant, your shutter is going to be some degree of open. But if you look at how that looks on a stage, it means that there's no real, there's no real negative space in the chase. It's all positive space. So I change, I change it to negative hundred. So that for half of the sine wave, it's ramping up, not ramping up, but it's sinusoidally increasing, then decreasing. Then it's in black. And then it goes through a half cycle of black and then it comes back up through white. So it's, it's more, uh, more obvious that a chase is going on or an effect. Excuse me. Groups, none. Width 100. And then wings two. That's all this effect is. And it ends up looking like... Uh, this. So this is what it ends up looking like. And then eight wings looks like this. PMW, I could probably edit a little bit so it looks a little better. Maybe 25 with four wings. There, I like that a lot better. Three chase, cosine, similar to sine, <laughs> and then random. So then I just do that for all the different fixture types. You, you know, put them into layout view, create the symmetrical selection, and then take selection of the symmetrical selection in your effect, in your selective effects. We still got a hundred viewers. You guys are savage. Fucking savage. Pro light and sound. Uh, yeah, she left. She went outside. Thoughts on Ava Light's desk? I don't like him. 
I just had uh, bad experiences early in my career. Then I found MA and I never looked back. And I'm not looking back. I've spent way too much time learning this. But uh, I'm going to go back to... Oh, shit. I hope I didn't lose. Okay, we're good. Screens are still there. I'm going to go back to my start show that I was working on. Uh, no hackerino, please. I'm going to block out my screen. All right. No, so the DD, oh my God, do not, I'm going to ban the phrase DDJRZ from the whole channel. So I loaned my DDJRZ to a friend. That friend no longer lives in the fucking state, it seems, and took it with him. And he's like, oh, I'm sorry. So now I'm trying to get it back, or at least have him pay me for it. Because <clears throat> I thought I'd be a nice guy. And let him use it. Because I don't like it. Uh, I don't really design that much. I mainly program. But the most common thing I've seen, uh, Vectorworks Spotlight is probably the most common. Followed by like actual CAD. I haven't heard about DMX Sushi. Uh, so there is kind of a macro for the take selection process. Uh, it's really just storing as a group. So let me show you. I'll go over to selective effects again. And we pull up. <clears throat> Still sick. <clears throat> so if I pull up um, beams sim. Actually, let me let me write it like this. Let's see if we can write a macro for it. That'll, this will be a fun little live exercise. Let's write a macro that I haven't written before and that I'll probably not know how to write. Scroll to an empty area. Um, we'll do... This will be for cloning beams or for taking selection of beams. So I would say group two, group 12, I think. Yeah, group 12, and then I'm going to say store uh, effect 993 slash O for overwrite. So let's look at the, oh, so it already, okay. Well, we'll have to undo that. We'll take clone source beam take selection. Okay, so now we have our 100 in there. Now if I run this macro, didn't work. Why didn't it work? Uh, oops. I'm going to try store group 12 at effect 993 slash O. Delete this one. Didn't work. So it always helps to have the command line up, but sometimes the command line just doesn't show any information about stuff like take selection. So I had I had a clone or a take selection macro earlier. Is there a way to preset in an effect as a low or high value through the command line? Yes, but not in the way you think. This will be a good segue into the color effects generator that I made. Uh, 
Uh, if the DMX dongle thing is not working, it's because it costs like ten dollars. <laughs> uh, send me an email. I'll I'll give you a refund. I don't make them anymore because I had too many complaints, and they're like, they're like for every for every twenty of them that I would send out, like one or two would be bad. How long do I usually program for a gig? Depends on the show. If it's a festival and I only get an hour, I only get an hour. If I only get 15 minutes before the act goes on, I only get 15 minutes. It's all about uh, having the tools to, uh, you know, get it done. So group 12, store effect 993, whoops. Not if, not 99 if, 993. Please. Try merge. Okay, let's try overwrite. Boom. Store. Overwrite. Now, see if I overwrite, I don't know why. Hmm. I had it earlier. There's definitely a way to do it, but I've been unable to remember exactly how I did it before. <clears throat> Thoughts on Martin M1? <clears throat> uh, hardware is not that good. Software is not that good. In my opinion. I think they've got a new HD thing coming out. You know, I... Honestly, I just don't have enough experience behind most of these consoles other than MA. MA is like what I've invested all my time into. Can I explain how I inverted the stop movement fader? Yes, <clears throat> I can. I'm going to explain it um, kind of like this. Uh, how can I explain this? <laughs> so I have in my patch... some dummy fixtures. So these are at the, like the very, very bottom here. And they are three fixtures that are patched to universe hundred. And all they are, if we pull up the module here, it's just a control channel that has a DMX range of zero to 255. I should probably actually, sh I probably make it a 16 bit, but all I'm doing is basically using this as an inverted remote. What do I mean? So these three faders that I'm using for the size, these aren't actually controlling any fixture data. These are controlling the control fixtures that I put in the patch. So this is basically saying uh, I'm moving that control channel from 0 to 100 here. But that control channel is inverted, right? So in the dummy fixtures, if I pull up fixture types and edit, uh, it's not, yeah, so it's my profile is an inverted linear. DMX profile, which means that it starts at 255 and it goes to zero. Then what I do is I have a remote input in the DMX remote section, three DMX remotes. Okay. And all they are doing is uh, listening for those three channels. And when it hears them and when it sees that it's being fired, it's relating that to a different executor on another page. So those other executors are right behind the main ones. So if I unfix these, unfix, and then I switch to page two, this is where the actual effect stomping is going on. And they're just temp faders. So this is where the fixture data is stored to stomp the 
to stop the movement. And all it is, is I'm taking all the spots, go to the position fix or uh, go to the blah, 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 position preset type. Say that six times fast. Uh, effect, and I'm storing a stomp into that hidden fader back here. Hi. Hello. Uh, so now all of the spot stomps are in this fader, but it's hidden behind this fader. So if I move this fader up to 25%, this other one's going to be at 75 or 74. Right? They're just always constantly inverted. And that is all I'm going to tell you. You can you can figure you can figure it all out. I pretty much told you everything. But like I said, this video will be uploaded and you can watch it in its entirety. Is there a delay? Depends. If you're using Artnet, there can be a delay. Um, MANet won't have a delay. Uh, scanning ACN won't really have much of a delay. Hey. Gonna be on camera? But for the most part, uh, there's really no noticeable delay. Uh, when playing back. I mean, sometimes a little bit, but it's nothing you can really compensate for. It's just the delay. It, the, honestly, the the bigger delay isn't in uh, in the time it takes from the signal to reach the console to reach the lights. It's from the actual physical delay of the, sh the mechanical shutters in the lights or the delay in the color flags in the CMY mixing engine. Those are those introduce more delay than any of the, the console or anything like that, honestly. I've never done theater, ever. And I, I don't plan on it. It might be kind of cool. I don't know. Might be cool. Okay, so that answers the question about that, hopefully. One thing that is kind of a bummer about this move size thing, you'll notice I have it as a, uh, a super priority executor, which means that it overrides the programmer. I kind of did that on purpose, uh, but sometimes it sucks when you're programming new effects and you forget that your size was only at like half. It's okay, though. All right, save this start show. <sighs> yeah, okay, any other questions before I go into uh, copying presets? When am I going to DJ live? Uh, probably, probably have a stream next week. Do I work with any pixel pixel mappable fixtures? Wait, do you mean like uh, BIs and stuff like that? I mean, any fixture is pixel mappable. As long as, I mean, you just lay, put it in layout view. First thing to do to enter this field, um, start working for a local production company that's doing shows and offer to uh, either if, if they're not, if they're not hiring, you know, offer to clean their cables, uh, offer to, I don't know, do anything around the shop and just so you can get time around the equipment. That's really all it is. Hi, Alex. Thank you for the comments. Yeah, you can set black as a color on the color picker. It, it, it's uh, not very good for the color flags, though. Uh, I, I guess it's not that bad. There's no real... I don't know if it's good or bad for the fixture, but it basically just takes... If, if it's a subtractive uh, engine, then it'll just put all the flags in the way of the light, and you'll probably, 
probably won't end up with a full black. It'll probably be like some brown like shit. Uh, no, I haven't been lucky enough to work with Alitas. ETC Ion doesn't work for me. I've tried. I've I tried using an Ion once, and it was uh, awful. I love the MA. That's it. That's it. Okay. Uh, let's talk about this color effects generator thing. Some people are curious. Um, let me make sure it actually works <laughs> uh, before I do this. We'll do it with the spots layout. Where'd my layout go? Oh, actually, okay, let's pop back into actual show. <laughs> okay. Back into this show. Ah, oh, just kidding. I didn't save it, so. Ah, such is life. How do I prepare for the next drop? It's kind of a funny question. I don't know. Uh, so really, it's all about just hiding what you're going to do next, right? So that means pulling all the dimmer chases down, like doing some distraction with strobes is like a really good way of doing it. So uh, if I wanted to change drastically like between two movements or whatever usually you have like about eight seconds during a build-up where there's like some like random strobe shit you can be doing with like atomics and um bpm uh, speed master um i haven't really been i don't really use these two faders that much so i don't use this bpm fader like at all ignore that The reason I black out the screen is because people can see the number of digits in my password. Okay. And I also type some extra random bullshit so that you guys can't know exactly how long my, because that's the password that I use for some other shit. So I really shouldn't, but whatever. Fight me. Uh, what was I talking about? Oh yeah. Color generator. Let's look at this. Let's throw this in layout. Zoom to fit. Whoa, that's a lot of shit. <clears throat> okay. So I have uh, this color generator thing. Yeah, it's my Pornhub password. Um, oh, let me share. So down below in the description, when this video is uploaded, I will include a link to the ACT lighting cheat page, which is super useful. Uh, so all the syntax stuff that you guys are asking about can all be found uh, on this website. But let me just pull it up here. It's the MA2 syntax options, okay? This has all sorts of stuff. So for assigning effects, let me pull up. Let's look at this, let's look at this page. Screen capture, go. Come on, screen cap. It's not letting me screen cap. Go. 
Come on, XSplit. You can do it. Do I use the MA remote? Uh, I do on my uh, my Surface Pro. If I want to look cool and super nerdy, but there's no real there's no real reason for it, honestly. Okay, I froze my computer. This is great. Good times, guys. Can you hear me? If you guys can still hear me, let me know. Okay, long story short, uh, something froze. Hang on it though. Whoop. Okay, shit. <laughs> Not sure what I did. Oh, okay, I just closed out of MA, that's great. All right, one second. Okay, should be back, maybe. Gotta re add this shit. Unfortunately, I have to take the stream down for a second because my uh, X split shit the bed. It's good, always good. I'll be right back. All right, should be back. Good times, thanks XSplit. You the real MVP. Real MVP. Greetings to India, greetings to Belgium. Uh, what were we talking about? Oh, uh, so I only have two screens available. This is like a, a big bug in XSplit, I'm pretty sure. Can't see display three. So weird. So strange. I guess we'll have to do with just these two screens for now. Oh, wow. We really dropped in viewers. That's okay, though. Why and or do I run a mobile app on a PC? <laughs> Greeting from the town where Casey Neistat did the last big project. Are you talking about the big drone thing? The human lifting drone? That's pretty cool. I haven't worked in India yet. I would like to. Book me. Hello to the UK. Belgium. Antwerp, what up? Okay, so let's talk about, what should we talk about? My color effect generator thingy. Let's, uh, oh yeah, so now let's talk about, let's talk about changing the effects from these exec buttons. Uh, I think I might have talked about this a little bit before, but cat's really loud. So uh, each row here, this is my positions page, as you can see, labeled positions. Uh, everything is by row here. So spots are all controlled. Their positions and movements are all controlled from this first row. Beams are all controlled from the second row. Washes controlled from the third row. Second wash controlled from the fourth row. Then everything is controlled from this little section over here. But 
uh, just doing like circles and pans and tilts, it can be annoying to have a huge amount of effects to update. So instead of doing that before every show and having like 18 different types of spots or excuse me, circles and pans and tilts and whatever, I just have one spot or one circle, one pan, one tilt, and then I modify that effect with uh, command line stuff over here. Uh, so it gives me a lot of different flavors to, uh, to change up and make it look unique every time. So for example, uh, if I reset everything here, right now if I hit uh, spot circle, it's going to create a circle that is spread along all of the fixtures in a, an even like wing. But let's say I want them to maybe move like an even odd circle or switch direction. I can do that with these buttons over here. So if I right click edit this direction sequence, you can see there's just two cues in here. One's forward, one's backward. Cause those are the only two options we really have for movement effects. You can't really do a bounce movement effect. And the command for forward looks like this. So I just have a sign and then spot moves. This uh, line of text here, this variable is basically just a placeholder for the phrase effect X through effect Y. So if I put in dollar sign spot moves, that actually is just typing in effect 105 or effect 1057 through 1063, which are all of my spot moves. So every time, oh, weird. So every time I hit this forward or backwards, it's editing all of those effects in the command line. And we can pull up the command line and see it's assigning that direction to those effects, right? How do I use a command wing at the show? I'm not sure what you're asking. I can do the same thing with phase. So I just have three cues in here. You can either do full zero to 360 or zero to 90. I haven't done a zero phase cause it's the same as having a group of zero and I already have group zero. And this is what it looks like to change the effect lines for phase. And groups is probably the coolest one uh, if I have it at none, it's like all spread out along all fixtures. But if I have it at one, they're all going to behave in the same manner. So they all kind of, if I have a circle with a group of one, they're all going to move together. And since I have them set up in a wing uh, effect, they will kind of like sweep in together all at the same time. It was like really actually pretty cool. Um, I also have this tricky little thing. Uh, let me see here. Let's see if I can find it. I can't remember where I put it exactly. Maybe I didn't put it in here. So these cues just kind of go through and edit all of those cues in uh, a batch, but I could also make it, uh, let's make another, let's say we wanted to have, a. Uh, to type in our own group that we wanted. Say none of these group numbers were satisfactory for our current show, and we wanted to be able to change it on the fly. Uh, I'm gonna copy this line of text, and then I'm going to create another queue, blank queue. And then I'm gonna name it uh, what should we name this X? I'm just going to name it X. Cause that means it's a variable. And over in the command, I'm going to type it again, but then I'm going to type in parentheses, how many groups of beams in parentheses.
I'm also going to create a loop in this so that I won't accidentally trigger this by going through. So what I did is I went to the previous queue and referenced it, the loop destination to one, Q1. So now I can run through this queue, or uh, this sequence, excuse me, and it'll never actually hit Q8, but Q8 is the one where I want to be able to like customize my input. So what I would do, I would hit go to Q, click, and then select Q8, at which point I can say I want groups of 16 and hit please. And now we have groups of 16 and all those effects. So that's how you can do something like that. That's a little more advanced uh, feature, but that's kind of how I, I work some of the more interesting parts of the show file. I already showed how to do the size master, but this video will be uploaded uh, after this is or after I'm, I'm done here. So the video will be up. It'll be, it'll be up. Just chill. Uh, what else? What you, you don't understand phase and width. Okay. So phase, think about it. Say you have 12 fixtures. Okay. They're all in a line on the stage. If you have everything set to phase zero and they're all going to, let's, let's talk about like a dimmer effect. If you have these 12 fixtures lined up and you have them all set to like a sine wave, but the phase is all zero across all of them, they're all going to brighten and douse at the same rate. So they're at the same time, they're going to ramp up, ramp down uh, intensity wise. Now, if I put uh, all the fixtures on the left side of the stage, so those six fixtures are at phase zero and the six on the right are at 180 degrees, then one's going to come up. And then as the other goes up, the other is going to go down and vice versa. So they're going to flash back and forth because this one is at uh, 180 degrees. This one is at zero degrees because you got to think about it as a circle. So as we're coming around each time, this one's going to go up, this one will go down, that one will go up, that one will go down. Now imagine if you spread those values from zero to 360 all the way across all of the fixtures. So you would actually see one goes up and it kind of like follows. You can, you can see them all chasing left to right and they'll never be at the same value because they're spread evenly along it. Uh, let's pull up an example here. We'll just make some, some, uh, quick example here. <clears throat> we'll just make a quick layout view. And then we'll make a few effects here. So we'll do, oh great. So some, for some reason, some of my MA is like freezing up again. Group one, we don't need screen one. We don't need no screen one, group one. Layout pool. <clears throat> Mac Viper. I'm only going to store these first, however many. Zoom to fit. All right, so we got 14 fixtures here. I'm going to create an effect pool like this. And let's see what that effect looks like, like I was just saying. So if we uh, we can also do this in the command line. We don't need to edit this in an effect uh, on a pool item. Pool items are just shortcuts for entering data in the command line, right? So we can go into dimmer and we can create a sine wave and they all go up and down. B 
because the phase is at zero by default. We can even store this to an effect and then call it back later if we want. Let's delete this first one. Uh, I'm not going to delete that. I don't know what that does. So uh, we could also create a second effect or update that effect so that this second half We'll just do this second half. Come on. Okay, so now we got our seven and seven. So the top line is uh, for the left side and the right side is for the right side. So if we set the right side to 180, the left side to zero, if we call this effect, we should see that left right pulse like I was talking about. Cool. So let's copy that effect and then edit it a little bit. We'll edit that copy. So I'm going to delete the second line. And now in the phase, we're going to, instead of saying zero, we're going to type in zero through 360. So now we're going to see that second effect that I was kind of talking about, where it just goes from one direction to another, like your favorite band. Who's talking in the background? Oh, there's a TV outside. One second. All right, so that's zero through 360. Yeah, it's my cat. <laughs> do famous DJs do presets live? Yes or no, no, <laughs> please explain. No, they don't. I mean, not usually. There's usually a dude like me who's a nerd sitting in the back of the festival making sure it looks like it's pre-done. There is some time coded stuff, but for the most part, like nine for for 95% of the acts, there is no time code whatsoever. But for that like top 5%, there may be if there's like an intro or like a a New Year's Eve countdown, stuff like that is going to be time coded. And that's pretty much it. Everything else is done kind of how I'm showing you here. So let's copy this. Uh, this one is the even odd. Uh, this one is zero to 360. And this one we're going to make zero to uh, 90. So zero to 90, it's like zero to 360, but you can see we're only seeing a quarter of the waveform at a time. Whereas this, we're seeing at any given time, there's one light that is at pretty much 100% and one that is at zero. And then there's all the phases in between there. This one, we never see both 100 and zero at the same time. Now we could do multiple waveforms and say, if we double this twice, this means that we're going to actually see four waveforms inside of uh, that one effect.
Uh, if you want to know about the login page, the last stream that I did had the the uh, the methodology behind how to do that. So check out that as soon as this video is done streaming. Uh, let's see what else. You you were confused about phase. Is that an elephant on my bed? Yeah, it is. Where do I get my spare Pioneer parts from? Pioneer. Or I buy used um, damaged equipment on eBay. Phase and width. Okay, and then width. Width isn't really that useful with sign, but uh, if I changed width to 25, it's basically going to... It's, it's like... Uh, it's like you're delaying the effect and it's only occurring a certain percentage of the time. So if I change it to 25, it's taking the whole waveform and scrunching the amount of time that it takes to complete it into a quarter of the time. And then the rest of it is spent at zero. Uh, it's useful for effects like uh, pulse width. So PWM number four. Uh, let's make something more normal. Right, so this is where PWM becomes useful, or where width becomes useful, because pulse width has it in the name, pulse width. Um, so I change this to 10 and recall it. It changes the, the amount of fixtures that are either on or off at any time. If I change it to 90, it's going to basically make the inverse look where all of them are going to be on except for one. And then you can do things with wings as well. So if we do a wing of two, it's going to take that entire selection and do it from the center. You can change the direction and go backward. You can even have it bounce, which can be a cool effect. Do like 85. So, you know, you can do cool stuff like that. And that's it's just really, really simple, easy stuff. I'm not going to do any pan tilt effects because I don't really have 3D set up right now. I did, I just showed a little bit of pan tilt. But let's talk about the color generator. Uh, so the way I have this set up, um, we'll, I'll actually use my layout view for that. Oops. I'll use this as an example, just because it's easy. So I'm going to store this as my spot symmetric. Store group 11 overwrite. So all of these uh, buttons for this effect uh, interact with this effect generator fader um, that I have on fader 9. But the fader doesn't do anything until I make the um, this like the effects active. So if I turn spot active on, and I change the colors between like white and red, and change the waveform, now it should theoretically. Yeah, it works. And it should work in real time as well. So I can go between blue and white, indigo and white, and uh, do groups of like two. Let's 
store. Uh, the reason, I'm not sure why it's not following correctly. Um, so what this is doing in my color uh, page over here, I have these effects, okay? Uh, spot gen effect, remove individuals, that's why. It's like a bug in the, in the effect editor, remove individuals is uh, something that shouldn't have to be done every time, but some for some reason it does. It's kind of frustrating. So what it's doing, these macros over here, like spot on, they're basically copying the group or they're storing the group spot symmetrical into the spot generator effect. And these effects are referencing the low and high values that are right here in these, these two presets, presets 100 and 101. So when I copy, I'll make sure I can actually see what's going on on the screen here. So when I copy, oops, all of these cues here, it's much like how I was doing with the, um, the other, the movement groups. It's just a queue list with command links and it's copying the presets. So preset 4.1 is my original white preset. So I'm copying that white preset at preset 100, which is my low of the effect that's being generated. So I can change it to red. It's kind of cool. You can kind of change it on the fly. You can change how many groups, uh, sine wave. Yeah. I didn't take any courses. I taught myself. Gaining viewers. MA2 hype. How many meters should you use a signal amplifier for DMX? 300 feet. Well, it just depends. So there's, if you go by the spec, it's like 1500 feet. But if you're going by what I would always go by, about 100 meters, 300 feet. Or if you have fixtures in between there, it's, it's like 24 fixtures or 300 feet is my general rule before you amplify the signal again. Because every time you pass through a fixture, you're getting some signal degradation. Even odd buttons, just make them with uh, a matrix and effects. So what I would do Um, actually I want to finish going over this wash thing. So what's really cool about this is then I can fade in and out of whatever color I am in, in the background. So if I have my spots in yellow, I can then fade it back into yellow or into the effect back into the effect, change the waveform. Oh yeah. Yeah, I hate how old DMX is too. Shit's been around for like, what, 30 years? 30, 30-ish years. It's like one of the oldest protocols and we're still using it. It's fine though. Honestly, I really, I like it. Um, then we can do like wings. 
too. So look. Yeah, I like this show file. So we do wings of two, no groups, and then ramp down. So you can do all sorts of auto-generated effects that are then controlled by the fader. Yeah, there's like no, the, the the data transmission rate is so low per universe of DMX. That's a really good point. I never really thought about it like that. It's like a kilo, a kilobit, kilobyte of data per universe, kilobyte per second. I'm assuming you're saying. Or yeah, no, just like total. Yeah, it's 512 eight-bit channels. Stupid. RDM already exists. Uh, I, 40 frames is more accurate, but yeah, like 30 frames a second. Okay, any other questions? So I have to go do some other stuff for the video for today. Today's video brought to you by No Sleep. The streaming version of whatever software you're in can be found in the setup menu. It's the first three digits. So right now I'm programming on 3.1.2.5, but I could, st I could, um, work between any other software version as long as the first three digits are 3.1.2. The dot five is the bug fix edition. The streaming version is the first three uh, decimals. Favorite gig? I don't know, that Chicago gig this last week was really cool. Even though I was, uh, I almost passed out twice programming because I was so sick. But like I say, show must go on. That was pretty bad though. I was taking my emergency, but nothing was helping. Yeah, is there a reason your color layout is based on sequences and not just macros calling presets? Because I don't like working in the programmer. That's, that's the reason. If you just call, if you say spots, if I say all my spots at red, okay, everything's in the programmer right now. Like what, what now? I, I, I don't want to, if I want to do anything else in the programmer, it's just, it doesn't make any sense. With sequences, you can, you can change how they interact. I was not drunk. How dare you? Uh, the effect size fader has been explained. Uh, it'll be, uh, this video will be uploaded after it's done yeah any site to start learning ma yeah console training.com what do i do when the console i have to program on is a different streaming version than the show file so you, as long as the show file is older than the console software, you can load it in and it'll work for the most part. There's sometimes there's some little bugs and shit. Um, but that should, that's something that's a part of the advanced process where before I get there, I, I have a good idea of what console I'm walking into. So if I show up and the console is too, too new, like say MA came out with a release like tomorrow, and I didn't know about it, and this person already updated the console, it's not a problem, it's not an issue. There is an issue if I show up to a show with my 3.1.2.5 show file, and their console is 3.0, and for some reason I don't have my console update stick, what any number of reasons why I can't update the console, then I can't load the show file. I There is a way, I think, if you send your show file to MA, they can like backdate it, 
I think that only happened. That's, that's like in absolute emergencies. If you have no other option, I think they will do that for you. Which scanner is my absolute favor favorite? None of them. Zero. Yeah, I used to work on uh, MPC, Martin MPC. I got a color effects, but I don't want a, a fade between the colors. Change the uh, the the form to pulse width number four. Uh, my layout view actually isn't that fancy, so it doesn't cause crashes. Those those pictures are only like. I think I, I made them in Photoshop as like 10 pixels wide. Black or white, what do you mean? Yeah, the M touches. Uh, like if, if I didn't have a command wing, I would get an M touch, Jason. That's a good call. I've never had to call the emergency hotline. I get tons of calls for people who think I'm the emergency hotline though. Show us how to get our fixtures out in the layout view. It's easy. All you do, select your fixtures. So we'll say fixture uh, actually, I'll just pull up a group. So, if I want to create a layout view, layout pool, you just need these two things layout view and a layout pool. Grab my beams, store them into a layout pool, then click on the pool. Now we see these are all my beams. Easy peasy. I can't do a tips video for MPC because I barely know how to get a show up and running on it anymore. It's been years. Most basic setting that I make before I go to any show. Mm, not really sure what you mean, but I'm guessing uh, the, f I mean the first, probably the most important thing is updating presets and effects. So I show up to the show, I do the cloning thing like I did at the beginning of the video, I update the effects, and then positions, and then make sure all the colors clone over correctly, that's like maybe the biggest thing. Who else in my house? My roommate Madison. My cat. What do you think about cracking MA2? To be able to output art now without MA hardware, uh, you can only do that like in really old, old versions of MA. How fast is my internet? Let's look. Good question. Now that's a good question. How fast is Christian Jackson's internet? Let's see. Let's see. Come on. Okay, XSplit's got me all sorts of fucked up. I don't know why it's doing this. Begin test. My ping, let's see, who's, what do you guys think my ping is? Ping, download speed, and upload speed. If anybody gets it right within, uh, within 2%, I will send you my show file. You guess the ping, the download speed, and the upload speed. If you guess it within 2%, I will, if you guess all three of those within 2%, I will send you my show file and my password. I'm in a residence. I'm not in a commercial zone. Pro tip. I'll give a few more seconds to get some guesses in here. Uh, 
there's there's some close people in here. There's some close ones. Let's see if I can screen capture is not working. It's really annoying. I don't know why. I think I have to, oh, wait, wait, there we go. I have to update XSplit. All right, we're going to reveal it. Get those guesses in. It's not working. Okay, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna have to tell you what it is. All right, we're stopping at Ronnie Holshoff. Ping six milliseconds. Download speed 122 megabits per second. Upload speed 7.95. Let's see if we had anybody close. 69, 69, 69. <laughs> Mm. Yeah, nobody really got that close. There's a few. <laughs> Shit. Nobody got it. Sorry, nobody won. The biggest difference between grandma and Avo lights is that I like uh, grandma. How has life been since I started vlogging daily? Except for the missing like three three days in a row because I was bent over a toilet, not in the sexual way. Uh, yeah, it's uh, I don't know. I'm trying to get better at it. I, I want to try to be entertaining with it rather than just factual. So that's the hard part. That is the hard part. One dislike. Wow, hating. Haters gonna hate. Do I always use backup console? Well, whatever they give me, I'll take. <laughs> In England, if down is over 30, it's too good. Remind me to never move to England. Jesus. <laughs> That's awful, dude. Oh, wait, is my, is XSplit working correctly now? I don't think so, no. I still have one, one screen that won't show up in XSplit. I think it's a bug. I think it's a bug. All right, well, I think uh, this session is just about over. Right now I use a Lenovo Y70 Touch for my mobile work. It doesn't really work that well, honestly. I need a new, I need a new laptop. I think I'm gonna get a MacBook Pro. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, I probably won't do a video teaching how to design because I don't really design. I program. I program the shit out of some designs. Designing is a, a different animal entirely. It's a whole different level of elite. It's just different knowledge. Why do I hate Apple so much? Just their philosophy on a lot of things. That's the only reason. Oh yeah, check out this Google Pixel, by the way. A, a, it sucks. The Pixel sucks, don't buy the Pixel.
Yeah, I think I'm going to call this live stream quits while we're still ahead. I kind of ran out of things to say. I might come up with some more specific tutorials that are like actual videos and not just uh, me rambling and explaining some things, but not really in any detail or specificity. So uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, this has been part two of the Grandma 2 live stream. Uh, unless there's any questions last minute here. Yeah, this phone sucks. I'm not, I'm returning this. Don't get the